Dave here. How are you? Today is the 12th of September. Now, I realize that for a lot of people, it will still be yesterday, which is 9-11, 20 years on. Can you believe it? What were you doing when this tragedy happened in the U.S.? There's some things in life that you will remember exactly what you were doing at that time. So uh, you can put comment in the uh, comment section on the side here. I should be, no, it's on here, this side, I think. Um, and let me know. Let me know. But hello to everyone. And uh, AB is all good. That's all good. I shall go in here and just quickly say to Facebook, uh, anyone can see this thing. Give me a second. Uh, privacy. Public. Done. All right. Today on the show, I was watching TV and crossed, and it crossed, couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was nighttime. For me, it was nighttime, middle of the night. Um, but the next morning, I poured the first section of my concrete driveway down the back here. And we were talking about it all morning while, while we were pouring the concrete. So that's, I, I, whenever I go past that bit of drive, you know, it's a reminder. Uh, this week on the show, turning some timber plugs for the finials on the roof. Now, in the trailer at the beginning of the show, you would have seen I've just put a couple of finials up on the studio roof. And I need to make some plugs to push into there so I don't get a rot, rot happening on those things. Those finials are H3 treated, which means they can go outside, but they're not pressure treated all the way through. It's basically only a very light treatment. So what I've done is I've drilled into there and I've painted all the inside with paint as well prior to putting the bugle head screws in. And then I'm gonna drive these in with glue and then sand it flush and then paint the outside as well. Now with those finials, finials I've decided to try and make them last longer this time. So I painted all the outside with West System before I put the primer in there, before I put the paint on. Because up there, there's lots of little fancy parts and there are little crevices for water to remain and you know the sun is cooking it and expanding close expand close and it cracks things and eventually rot gets in there now they've lasted 20 years maybe a bit longer so hopefully this time i don't have to go up there again because i'm not getting any younger um okay so and we're going to trim the tabletop it's out in the other in the garage i'll wheel it in after we've done the lathe work uh, and also tips on resin and filler as well as sanding the top I've done all of the sanding on the top of it. So you don't have to sit through me going, Arr! I'll talk about it a little bit though, and give you some tips on the process that I use. May not be the one that you use. And you know, if, if yours works for you, that's great. If you can pick up some tips from what I do, that's great as well. Um, <clears throat> Graham Bland's Stanton Bench Experience. Now Graham, who's probably watching at the moment, purchased a bench from me and I'll show you the photos uh, of when it was all packed at my place. And then when he unpacked it and assembled it. So there's a few photos there. And I think he's pretty happy with it. He might be able to pipe up and say, um, it's rubbish or it's working pretty well. See what happens. If you want one, there's links in the description box down the bottom. Uh, a shout out to Gary, my daughter's neighbor, who is keenly following the table project. Who would have known that the guy who lives next to one of my daughters said, uh, is your dad Dave Stan? <laughs> she said, yeah. So there you go. Uh, I love what he's doing with the table and he loved the resin drafting table that I built as well. So there you go. That's, it's always nice for me to get feedback. If you like what I'm doing, link, uh, click the comment area down the bottom after the show as well. You can throw in um, this bloody beautiful good on you, Graham. I'll give you money after the show. Uh, what I was going to say was after the show, please put comment below uh, and then I'll know whether I'm doing the right things or whether I'm ticking you off. Um, and that is that, the discussion of obviously about the 9-11. All right, I'm going to switch over to the other camera over here and let's see if I can't stuff this up totally. Now, I am not a wood turner. I can tell you that straight off. Matthew Lau has been at me so long. Dave, you're going to do some wood turning. You're going to do some wood turning. And last week I said, you never can tell, or maybe you will see what happens. So this week I'm going to do it. All right, I'm going to switch the cameras over. And you can see 
There it is. Now I have made basically a dirty big pen black to turn these plugs out. This is cedar, so it shouldn't be affected too much by the weather. Now here I have just a mini lathe and I've got some jaws on the end here that aren't really designed for this. They're pen turning jaws, but I can slide that in there and then I'll open up my drawer down the bottom here and I'll get this and tighten the uh, tighten it up. And you'd be amazed how they line up quite well. I'm going to slide the tailstock up to it before I clamp it off too much. And that's lining up perfectly that way. And pretty good that way as well. So I'm going to lock the tailstock in position and then tighten it up. And then tighten this one up a little bit more. And if I'm getting it wrong, forgive me. <laughs> All right, gonna lock this. So it can't move around. And I'm gonna turn it on and give it a try, see if it's gonna be centered, close enough to center. That's looking more right. That's okay. It's nice and quiet, this lathe. I love it. Oh, one of the other things I found when I got this, I, just this morning, I got a file because yesterday when I was practicing a little bit, because heaven forbid I should do something without actually having a practice before I start the show, and the gouges were catching on the top here. So I got a file and just slowly dressed off the top so that there was no little divots along there for the, for the tools that I was using to catch. And when I had done that, I decided to do a little bit down the back as well so I didn't have a very sharp edge to cut me. All right, just a little tip if you're interested and if you've found something like that had been happening. Now I'm going to use two tools on this. I'm going to use a roughing gouge. Make sure that's in the right position and then flip this down that way. I'll actually move this along so I'm not right up beside the jaws there because that could be a bit dodgy. Come on. I think I need to clean the... Yeah, oh, it's just that little part underneath catching. I'm trying to set this up parallel. I'm going to use the gouge because it will actually act as a slicing member. It's, as the timber is turning past, see that? It's going to slice it. And I'll be doing that forwards. I'm just going to work in this central area. And hear how that, that's moving on really nicely now, before it was really catching. So I'm just below the center. Maybe I'll come down a little bit more, but this position here is correct for me. I can drop this down just a little bit and making sure it's still parallel to the wood. So there to there and there to there have got to be the same distance for me. All right, that might work a little bit better as I'm cutting. Yep, I think so. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wear my helmet, which has got a blower in the back. And this is the one that John made a new battery for me. So this is the alien headgear. And see how we go. Oh, there's a little thing has come through on my phone. I better quickly check it. Okay, turning on the blower, so you'll hear that a bit. It's a look, isn't it? <laughs> ah, thank you. I don't, I'll come over and have a look at that. Adrian, thank you very much. All right, now the thickness that I've got to get this to is the head of this Type 17 bugle screw. So I shall turn my calipers on. I leave the battery compartment just to open a little bit and zero it and then open it up. And you can see it's around 14 millimeters. 
You can just check that all that's all working. 14, so I'm gonna leave it there like that. And as I'm turning, I'll then run the calipers along to check that I've got the right diameter. All right, I think I can start. That's spinning nicely, all of that's working well. Let's see how we go. Now my finger is a depth gauge. I'm holding onto the edge of the chisel here and resting my finger against there. Go again. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a flat there. I'm slightly off center. It's pretty round there. So I'm going to keep on going with the gouge until I get this down. Let's have a look how we're going for thickness. I've got a fair way to go. All right, keep on going. Okay, I'm all the way as far as round is concerned now. We've got a fair way to go. I'm going to um, come back a little bit. About there and lower the, the tool rest down a little bit more. So I'm working slightly below it. As I said, I'm not, I'm not a turner. I don't profess to be, but I, I can end up with a bit of a result. That looks a little bit more comfortable to me. Getting closer. I'm going to try the scraper. This is a scraper chisel. And I'll be holding it like so and try and get a straight edge there. A bit more.
probably a whole lot of people out there having conniptions. But that's good. I'm happy with that. I can take this off. Release this. Take that out. Turn that that way. Come back over. There we go. So that's that little section there. So that piece of timber is part that I'm after. This part here is called chicken. Because <laughs> I didn't want to get too close to the chuck on the, the jaws on the chuck. Because if that chisel hit it, it would go around the workshop. And I didn't want that to happen. This end, what the hell? I had this piece of wood that works. Anyway, there's your turning. There's your, math, there's your wood turning, Matthew. Uh, 83, 78, need, uh, John, I never did turning before. If it's out of center, will the curve at the end where it meets the square stock be different on the corners? I don't know. Uh, Russell, Dave, don't apologize for your turning. You did it differently to uh, I would have done, but that doesn't make <laughs> you wrong. Uh, you're all very kind. Yes. All right. What next? What next? That's the turning part out of the way. I'm going to move this machine back out of the way and I'm going to wheel the big table in. And this is the part that I think most people have wanted to watch. I'll put this over here. Oh, it's all fun. It's all fun. I've got the wheels locked. At that end, I think we're all good now. I love this little cart. It just makes life easy. All right, bring the big fellow in. Now I've got it up on top of one of my other tables on purpose. Let's bring this around here. And we can have a look. Actually, I think I'll move that one across here. This could be dangerous. It could be dangerous. I'll go around the back. I think it's going to be better. Yes, definitely. Good. <laughs> not a good lathe unless it's launched something across the room, eh? Maybe not. All right. So here we have the top with filler and all sorts of things in it. And it's been fun doing it. This is resin. And these underneath, what I did was I coat put uh, clear contact over the whole of the bottom of this unit. I sanded the back a bit first, then I put clear contact over the whole lot and brought it up the edges. And one of the things I forgot to do was to cut the ends off before I brought it up the edge. And of course I had different sections of plank. <laughs> it was a bit embarrassing. So I peeled the contact back a little bit, cut the ends and put the contact back up. Now, rather than me cut Oh, sorry, rather than me try and sand all of these ends, because it's going to be a hell of a job where the resins come through to sand all of that off. The easiest thing for me to do is to take around three millimeters off the end. So I'm going to do that right the way around the table. And that's the next thing that I'm going to do. As a matter of fact, uh, where are we? It's a good piece if you can keep it rather than have a pile of shavings. Yes, I've heard many terms as far as wood turning is concerned. 
pretty scary really when you consider it. It's, it's spinning something up really fast. And it is a bit of an accident waiting to happen if you're not careful. Now I'm just trying to think ahead of everything as I'm going along. I think I'll do this side first. So I'm going to do both edges. I'm going to do this edge and I'm going to put the parallel guides on and make that the same as this, like the width. So it's parallel. I'll do it so that the blade is just inside the cut so we don't have dust everywhere. Cool. That's all good. And we'll need the dust extractor for it as well. Come back over here. Like so. That might be better and you can see what I'm up to. Around here. You might be able to see it better. I, I think so. Good. Uh, now. You can see where I've been sanding everything yesterday. And cords and cables and what have you everywhere. Um, plug this in. Now the table is 42 millimeters thick, so I'll set the track saw. Oh, I've already got it set at 46. That'll be fine. Um, grab some goggles. Have a quick read. Morning, Paul. The only cut on the downstroke of the pedal. No power points in a forest. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, let's get this started. Turn the dusty on, but I've got to plug the actual shop vac into there. A little bit embarrassing. I can disconnect the lathe. Good. Now it might work. Alrighty. Come on. I've got the rip blade in, the panther blade. Good. Ah. How should I turn the dusty on? I hadn't Bluetooth the um, the battery to the dusty yet. All right, next thing. How wide do I want these? Throw a couple of these on it. off for the moment. All right, spin this around. Okay, 
this is my right, and this is the left. Now you'll notice that there is a cup in the top because the parallel guides aren't sitting down perfectly flat. And that is because I took it out in the sun, dried all of the fibers on this face of the top. And as they dry, they shrink. And so it does this thing. Now the other side is coated with um, this clear contact. So the fibers on the other side couldn't dry out at all. So they still had their moisture content that they've had up in the rack. Whilst it was very, um, a very low content, it still is a moisture content of some sort. Oh, we're getting a bit of wind here outside. Anyway, so what I'll do is when I've finished working on this and had sanded the other side, I'll take it outside in the sun again and I'll put a straight edge on it and I'll watch it and it'll slowly dry the fibers out and it will go flat again. When it gets to flat, I'll bring it straight back inside. Now the width that I want this will be, let me see, I'll take it back up to there and up to there and I think it's going to be, I'll set one to one, one length, that is going to be So it's telling me that it is if I set it to 11.30 that'll be fine. So I've set one end to 11.30, I'll just set this to 11.30. That makes it very easy. Cool. Now, obviously, if I was doing a lot of repetitive work, that's where this kind of setup is really going to uh, come into play. For this, I possibly could have just brought it across and guessed it. But the thing is, I wanted to make sure I was parallel to that side. These planks, when I've dressed them all up, they may have gone a little bit different in width, may, might, may have tapered. But the joins are absolutely beautiful. Remember, we did this with the track saw. All right. Quick read. Uh, morning all. Yes, we're all being very sociable and saying hello. I'm going to Bluetooth the uh, saw to there so it, it, uh, it's not embarrassing. <laughs> and I do that just by pushing on this button down here until it starts going spinny, spinny, spinny. And then I turn the saw on. Done. And it's Bluetoothed. All right, bring this over here a little further. And you can see it in action. Get your eye muffs again. How are we doing for time? It's only half past. We're going great. All right, a little bit of noise. Come on, up you come. That's cool. Dock the edges, dock the ends, I should say. Edges, what am I talking about? It's 
slide these back in the holster that I made for them. And grab that. Grab this one, put it back up. back over here for a second. Have another quick read. Ah, oh, I love this saw. Um, the underside and the hammer in a counterpiece to keep the table top flat. Nope, that'll all happen from the frame. Don't have to worry about it. We're going to use buttons underneath to lock it to the frame when I build the frame. All right, next thing. Get rid of that. Um, I've got to change the blade in the saw. So I'll do that straight away because I'm not going to be ripping. That's a rip blade in there at the moment. I want a cross cut blade in there. So how we do that is pull this up. And to there, and it locks itself in position. Now the blade is out. I can't turn it on. It's locked it, even though the batteries are in there. When it's up there like that, I pull out the little Allen key. And I can now undo it. And it's a standard right-hand thread. The Capex, on the other hand, is a left-hand thread. You late, Brendano. Uh, the table, when it's finished, is 8 feet by 4 feet by 42 millimetres thick. Probably end up being 41, which is inch and uh, nearly inch and a half, just over an inch, inch and a half thick. There's the panther blade. See, it comes out so quick. I get, I get the other blade I'm going to use, which will be a fine cut. Pull the riving knife up just a little bit. That's him. The, uh, the washer or the flange has got little keys in it that drop into the right position. Got it. And then this is a countersink. Carriage bolt, I guess you could call it. Locks in. Nip it up. Put the Allen key back in so it's ready for next time. Hold it down and then release this little thing. Otherwise, it goes clunk, it makes a horrible noise, and you know, it's no good. So that's all set. I grabbed the this guy. Now the reason I did both sides to start and parallel is so I can use this now and still get a perfect 90 degree end on both ends. If I'd only done one end or one one edge and then use this off there and come across, I would have got a nice square corner there. And if I just cut this without actually making it parallel to the other side, then my end at the other end would have been square to this face, but it would have been kind of a parallelogram. It would have been ugly. Believe me, it would have been ugly. So, next thing is slide that on. Like so, done. And that's my square. Now, the important thing now is not cut through the table underneath. 
So pull it along a little bit past. Because that would be um that'd be a very sad thing for me to do. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna bring it along a little bit here. I'm gonna show you with the other camera how much it would have been out of square if I just kind of rough as guts the whole thing. Let's have a look. I'll bring this camera up closer and you can see what's happening. So here, there's around about four millimeters. Down here, nothing. So that's how it's running out, four mil. And that would have been terrible. You know, it wouldn't have made any difference to what people were eating at the table, but it would have, it would have worried me. It, you know, I would have known it's there. Um, I'm going to take it back in a little bit further so that we're actually cutting that resin off. So this, now I don't have to sand all of that. I'm going to turn this light on out here because it might throw a bit more light on the job. There, how's that? Is that a bit better? Yeah, so here, I don't want to have to sand all that resin. I'm just going to cut all that off. And I just push down on the track. It will deflect enough for me to do that without any worry. I'll plug this in. This over there. Now I should also lower that down a little bit. That's one of the reasons why it was making dust earlier because I hadn't dropped it. Done. And away we go again. Next cut. Bring this up to here. All right. Just lost one of the wheels on the table underneath. we go. Resin, resin, resin down here and up the end there as well. That's pretty amazing. All right, I've got to cut the other end. So I'll switch the, come over a quick read again. Oh yes, exactly right. I'll know it was there. Show there with your name painted on. Oh, okay, Nick, the adapter is still working. Oh, Nick, it's a great, it's a great adapter. Love how the track saw grips well enough to push the whole table rather than slide. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But it was actually the top sliding around on the table as well because of that cup. All right, I'm going to just spin that top on the table rather than just move it end to end or the saw to end. It's going to be quicker. It's a massive top. The Atelier weighs one tenth of a ton. One tenth of a metric ton. And to assist this time, what I'm going to do to stop any movement is I'll put a clamp on it. Is 
I'm going to hold it down here. There we go. Beautiful. That's going to be better. Put this on. And this side, there's hardly any run out. All right, I won't switch the cameras. You can stay there and watch. You'd always use a clamp, especially with those cuts. Yeah. For people that aren't quite up to what's being said there, it's one of these clamps on the end that I can slide into here and then lock it. So it's not going to move left or right. I've got it in the right position back here, that's all good. Depending on the dollar value of what you're cutting is how I basically work with, with the clamp. If it's cheap, I don't worry about the clamp too much. If it's more expensive, I always use the clamp. All right. Should go a bit quicker this time. All right. I was going to cut the corners. How are we doing for time? Quarter two. I don't think I will. I'll cut the corners a little bit later on. Another, another day or maybe even during the week. Just moving that out of the way. Ordinarily, on the corners here, I would cut a 45 across. I'd come in two inches, basically 50 millimeters, and then cut across. And I would use the HKC with its own special guide rail, the FSK. And uh, it, it works really well. So it'd be just zap, 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 and it's all done. But what I'm going to do now is my superhuman feat of flip this over and put it back up the other way. Remember, it weighs 100 kilos. That's, that's five bags of concrete mix. You know, when I was younger, yeah, I could possibly do it. But now I've grown up a little bit and I thought, no, why? Use this, not this so much. So I'm moving a few things out of the way and I'll explain what I'm going to do. and having a drink at the same time. Set the camera up here. Now I'm going to use something that I designed many, many years ago and did a video on it. I might even put a link up here somewhere for this video. And the hernia is fine. I may have another one on the other side, but you never can tell. Um, I was told I had one on the other side, but it was really small. So we'll just keep an eye on that one. And I'm looking after it as well. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sheet lifter that I designed for this main assembly table. I'll flick to the other camera and you'll be able to watch. So on the back, on the back of this are a couple of T-bolts. One there, one there, and I'll slide it in to this T-track. This is a heavy duty T-track uh, from MagSwitch. I'll slide it in there and there. Now I'm gonna to look 
to make sure I'm pretty much centre. I could even be a little bit fancy and use a tape measure. Overall, that's 15, so 750 to the centre. That's very close. Tighten those up, tighten those up, and it's not going to go anywhere. Now, this thing has the capacity of doing this, and you might all go, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> You've got no idea what I'm talking about. Basically, it is designed for a 1200 wide sheet of plywood. That's what I built it for, and for melamine, or a four feet wide for you people in the States. Now, it's less than half the width of that sheet. So this is around 500 and something. Let me have a quick read. No, sorry, 630. Of course it has to be that because I have to have some weight pushing down on here. So as it's gonna make it very easy for me to pivot and lift the sheet up. Now, how am I gonna get that onto this? This is where these things are gonna come into play. I need to make sure that I've got enough height, a little bit more. Perfect. So that's one end. I'm gonna put that around the corner here, like so, push it up to there. And I'm gonna do another one. Get the same kind of height. These are old slats off an old bed. That cypress isn't, but the rest are. There we go. I'm just slightly higher than this, and I'm going to put these down that end. Without them all going all over the place. Slide them all down. And slightly forward there. Beautiful. All right. The next thing to do, come back to the other camera. <laughs> yep. So, the next thing to do is because that top, this one here, is sanded down to 220 grit. I don't want anything scratching it. So I'm now going to open this. Now this is an underlay, carpet underlay. And I've had this for many years. And I normally throw it down if I've got something really, really nice that I'm working on. And I don't want it scratched. I'm being very careful as I put it on the bench. That's looking good. Nearly there. Good. Now it's not going to foul. It's not going to foul the foot down there on my sheet lifter. I've got the areas on the side there that I can bring this over now and lower it down onto those. And it might go clunk, I might drop it, it doesn't matter. Everything's gonna be okay because I'm gonna lock those wheels. So I'll move this back over here. And I think that should be okay. I'll have a look at the other camera. Look at green. Nice like jungle drums. Okay, let me have a look at this other one. I think maybe just tip it up a little. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You ready? I'll switch the cameras. All right, so you can see I have a support down here, a support on this side. I've got the lifter in the center. And the whole idea is for me to slide this top Move that piece of paper out of the way. Down onto there. So I'm going to undo the locks on the wheels 
on here. Slide this back onto, I should have done that first, onto there a bit. Oh, that might be all right. Wheel the whole thing back over this way. Yep. Lock the wheels again. Push it back along so it's the middle. And one of the important things, some handles, a couple of handles. This makes it easy for me. Spin that back. All right, I mean, might even lock these back wheels. <laughs> oh, I've got one done, that's fine. All right, here we go. All right, now it's not gonna tip off yet because we're still so much on this table. Now get up here. And I can come in slowly. I've got my feet over the back, see this? To hold me, I'm down. That wasn't too hard, was it? All right, now I just push her up. Uh, I'll unlock that other wheel that I did. Stand her up. Like so. Unlock that wheel. Got it. And that wheel. Roll that back out of the way. Make sure I'm going to be over the lifter, which I am. Now I can take the handles off. And let's see how we go. Hmm. Just making sure we've got plenty of grip on that lifter, which we do. What do you think? What do you think? Slide them back. Like so, bring the table back in. And lock. Now I'm guessing there's gonna be people out there saying, really, really, what am I watching this for? Well, the reason you're watching this is because a lot of you guys do things on your own. Like me, you're in the, in the shed on your own and if I can show you a way to make it easy, well, why not? Why not? Why not? I'm going to put a handle on it again to pull it back. I'll only use the one. Actually, I'll put the other handle on because I don't want it dropping down quite yet onto the top. Lovely. There. And the other side. Um, and I may even put this underneath very soon. 
undo those locks. Wheel her back out of the way. Now you can see the contact as well. Uh, yeah, I am going to put I'm going to put the sheet underneath that uh, piece under there because why not? One more. I don't want to run the risk of scratching it while I'm working on this side. Cool. Slide this under. Get my mouse, Whoop, which has dropped its battery and its cover. Casualty of war. I'll slide this under this way. Drop that one. Literally. And that will hold that in position. rotten thing. It's not going to play ball with me, is it? Well, I got it nearly right. Now this one's decided to run away. <laughs> That's better. Don't worry about it. Uh, I need another person, but not to worry. Let's go to here. Yeah. Back to this one. Anyway, I've got it up the right way. So now I'm going to take this off. I should have really had that uh, underlay in position. Prior, get my finger out now. Got it. So it looks nice and glossy as a finish, doesn't it? Let's see how we go tearing it off. And then we're just about done. Uh, two piece seventy five carbon things I don't want scratched. Yep. Um, uh, breathing again. Okay, it's all fun. <laughs> it really is. I'll go back to this camera and let's take it off. Okay, this is the, un this is the, um, the contact and let's take it all off. Of course, I have to end up sanding this. I'm not going to sand this while you guys are there. I'll come back to it. Now the contact was there to stop the bleed through. These knots from the other side when I was pouring the resin, you can see there's a massive area right here. I'll bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see that one as a matter of fact, because that's really found a highlight.
the point. Oh, I love it. This is great. I'll come in closer on it. So see this? This is resin that's come all the way through from the other side and here as well. And it would have just kept on pouring all over the floor and you'd never stop it. You can see all the points where we've had the bleed through from the other side. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have a look at the other camera. Have a quick read. No, it's all good, all good Peter. I'll, I'll sort of, what I'm going to do is I'm just thinking to myself, I will move the top. I'll just pivot one end onto this side, put the blanket out on there, and then just bring it back and pop it back on there. It'll be fine. It, it won't take me long. Um, all right. Bleats Woodshop. Hey Dave, how are you? I'm, I'm well, I'm well, I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. I'm going to check my run sheet. Then we're going to have the Patreon meeting. It says if you want to join in that, there's links in the description box below the video on how to do that. Join Patreon and then you can uh, jump in with us and we can talk about how uh, I nearly got it right. <laughs> uh, let me see. Reading through here, the finials, the timber for that, trimming the tabletop. Let's have a look at Graham's delivery. Okay, so this is at my place and uh, waiting to go out the door. This is when it's arrived at Graham's and he's opened up the, uh, the packaging. So I spent a lot of time doing the packaging. Uh, this is inside. You see, this is how the stamp bench arrived for him. And then he's followed the instructions that I gave him on how to tape everything up prior to doing any wax. And here he is assembling it. He's put the, uh, the connecting piece in correctly and got a clamp on it. And then some other clamps and put the screws in and glued. And assembled. You can you see it's just fantastic. It doesn't slide around at all. And then this is the bench at his place on, in his workshop with a couple of clamps already in it. And then he was actually using the thing you know, a, a day or two ago and sent me the photo up and said, Dave, it's working great. So there you go. Uh, I'm having a quick look down through here as well. I don't know if there's anything else. That's it. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. And as I say, I've got the Patreon meeting just after this. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and let's see what we can get up to next weekend. Bye.